and emerging threats to our nation's security. Terrorism and espionage, cyber crimes, narco cartels, human trafficking, border security, infectious diseases, and much, much more. Your contact for this weekly program is a former decorated counterintelligence analyst with a rare point of view from the inside. He's also an award winning journalist, highly regarded among homeland and national security professionals. Tonight, join Tony Kimmery and his special guests as they examine the ever-increasing threats to our national homeland. Here's Tony Kennery. And thank you again for another Saturday listening to us at home, Homeland Security Off the Record. Uh, You're tuned in to Homeland Security. You're tuned in. We'll be texted back an opt-in form, uh, which you must opt into to allow us to put you on our real-time text alert service so that you get advanced notices about these programs. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about China uh, again. Um, at a ran- the ransomware attack recently. Um, the Chinese Communist Party's mission to control global food development and supply chain. Also, the recent Iranian elections and the continuation of, on their part uh, to, to continue to steal tech. But first, I'm going to get this out of the way quickly. Uh, and, you know, I always provide as succinct of bios of my guests as possible so that you, you understand they know what they're talking about. Now, all these programs are on our website, our radio page, and their full biographies are there. Uh, they're much longer than the descriptions of each show. So I'll be succinct. Uh, my first guest, Don, who I think has the distinction of having been on more than anyone else, Don Ulch, uh, is an internationally recognized executive speaker, lecturer, cybersecurity analyst, author, uh, and advisor to industry, government, uh, defense intelligence, uh, he's a guest lecturer on cyber warfare at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. Um, he was uh, the Global Cyber Threat Advisor to the CIA uh, from 2012 to 2014. <coughs> advisor to the U.S. on protecting and reducing government secrets. Representative to the Department of U.S. Treasury Cybersecurity Task Force on Critical Infrastructure. As advised, the U.S. Naval Lab, Department of Homeland Security, Air Force, all regarding cybersecurity threat analysis involving AI and machine learning, and was nominated as the Department of Homeland Security's liaison to the CIA. Uh, he was Senior Managing Director of Cybercrime for PricewaterhouseCoopers, where he led cybercrime investigations, and was Vice President of Information Security for Dun & Bradstreet, and now has what we call the China 863 Analysis, which we'll be learning a lot more about. My next guest, uh, who was on recently, uh, is retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel of the Special Forces, Sargis Sangarin. He's a decorated combat veteran. He served more than 20 plus years in the U.S. Army, Army Infantry, and Special Operations Forces with multiple combat deployments to Iraq, where he actually survived seven IED attacks and was awarded the Combat Action Badge. He held diplomatic assignments in Kuwait, and multiple other deployments in the Middle East, Europe, Asia, and Central America. It's impressive. Over the course of six years of continuous combat deployment, Colonel Sangari conducted 144 combat patrols, 22 Special Operation Forces missions, and two key direct action operations. He conducted 670 key leader and tribal leadering uh, about in December of last year that the the Japanese government had decided not to budget for the F, uh, uh, F-15J uh, to rever- reverbish the uh, fighter jet uh, for 2021 budget because of the lack of electronic equipment that we needed to renovate. Mm-hmm. Now, those electronic equipment lack was because they're all in the hands of the Chinese. Uh, the Chinese are the ones who basically push them up, depending on how fast they were going to push them up because of the decisions we had made in previous years. Mm-hmm. Also, you had the you know, Japanese uh, um, Air Self-Defense Force plans 
to improve their uh, performance mm -hmm. by even updating their radars and avionics mm -hmm. um, that are installed in that F-15J um, uh, being affected. Why? Because Mitsubishi yeah, please the industry, not bother me. which uh, is the one that has to mm -hmm. undertake those renovations, signed a contract going in July mm -hmm. of the year with drugs. I'm trying to find the website experiencer.org because they have, they said, fascinating articles and stories about um, people's encounters with aliens. But I can't, my Google isn't working and my Chrome isn't working. So I'm restarting.
I'm gonna look on the computer and see if I can get to it. Oh, it's the John E. Mack Institute. Cool. Mm -hmm. It's the John E. Mack Institute, yeah. Getaway with my parents to the site experiencer.org. Now, overall, in the decades that have passed since the Kenneth Arnold sighting, we've had mountains of research done. Um, looking into the reality of alien beings, visits, and craft, we've examined crashed and landed saucers, trace evidence, cra craft and lights in the sky, abductions benevolent and negative contact experiences, conspiracy, and a whole lot more. But are we any closer to knowing what's really going on? That's why I'm excited to have Ryan Sprague on the show tonight because, as I mentioned, he's been doing uh, some research uh, in this field, investigating and interviewing a lot of different kinds of experts and experiencers as well. He's even had his own childhood experience that we'll find out more about. And tonight he's going to share his thoughts and findings from his new book, Somewhere in the Skies, A Human Approach to an Alien Phenomenon, which was recently published, I'd like to add, by the Richard Dolan Press. Richard has a very popular show here on KGRA. Ryan presented recently at the International UFO Congress in Port McDowell, Arizona. I was there. He was enthusiastically received by the audience, so I'm sure we're going to see more from Ryan in the coming years on the topic of UFOs, contact, and non-human intelligence interaction with human beings. A little more about Ryan. He's a playwright, screenwriter, and actor, as well as author. He's originally from Syracuse. He studied acting and playwriting at Oswego State University. And two years on the road, acting for the National I'll Theater come back Arts when I have Education. Something. I want you to hear this. this is John E. Mac, MD. Um, I'm listening to Ryan Sprague on Rosemary Ellen Gulyev's, um radio show on KGRA. And she mentioned a site, experiencers.org. And I couldn't get it on my phone. <coughs> but when I typed it into the computer, I got the Johnny e. Mac Institute, and of course he's the author of Abduction. 
But I wanted you to hear what he's saying here. <clears throat> the world, the world as it's currently going, is is destroying the planet environmentally and and otherwise. A couple questions here. Um, first of all. This again takes me back to the biblical prophet saying, um, you know, sort of the end is, it's, it's sort of the, another reminder of the end is near. It's the universal warning uh, of God to Israel or to the world that shape up or I'm going well, to blow you away again. Chris, the analogy with prophetic traditions isn't necessarily wrong. It just means we have to maybe rethink how prophetic Absolutely. matters would show up Absolutely. at this time in this cause. Since we only know the material world, it might have to show up materially for us to even pay any attention to it. Now, okay, I, but that's, that's one question, but I just want to compound it with, with the other question. That I always think I want to ask he said that these abduction experiences in our culture seem to be coinciding with the destruction of our, of our planet. So I'm going to try to go back far enough for that. Uh, her case is atypical in some sense is in that, that often uh, when people are having these experiences, children, for example, in the case of parents, will witness that the parent is actually missing. In other words, in some situations, the physical body is missing. other situations, other witnesses can see that they have not been physically removed. Again, that gray, nuanced range of penetration of this phenomenon into our physical world. The, the fact that they choose people that are vulnerable, I don't know about that. There, we haven't found any consistent personality characteristics, and it's very hard to know what has shows up in the personality after having these experiences, as opposed to that this was the type of person it was, because we, if this begins in infancy, they've lived with this their, their whole lives. But I think that choosing people in the communication what gets communicated is quite interesting. Words, in addition to the traumatic reproductive aspect, this is occurring in the context of the destruction of the planet's living systems. And that fact gets communicated to people telepathically in these experiences over and over and over again. This, this is something I've always wondered about. You say that, that the sort of one of the bottom line messages in all of these visitations is a sense that the world, the world as it's currently going is is destroying the planet environmentally and and otherwise a couple questions here um first of all th this again takes me back to the biblical prophet saying um you know sort of the end is it's it's sort of the uh, another reminder of the end is near it's the universal warning uh, of God to Israel or to the world that shape up or I'm going well, yeah, to blow you the, away again. Chris, the analogy with prophetic traditions isn't necessarily wrong. It just means we have to maybe rethink how prophetic Absolutely. matters would show up Absolutely. at this time in this cause, since we Hold only on, know on. the material world. I didn't know I was going to be in this position um, to ask for tortures for souls. All I know is it was like trying to get out of a swarm of flies or mosquitoes. You know, it's like, what do I have to do to get out of this swarm? That's what I know. World, it might have to show up materially for us to even pay any attention to it. Now, okay, I, but that's, that's one question, but I just want to compound it with, yeah. with the other question that I always think I want to ask John Mack is, what if the message from outer space were something you profoundly did not like, like, you know, nuke the commies now before it's too late, or, or uh, you know, um, can you know. I, can look, I, I don't like the message we, uh, I'm sorry, you come in next right after this, okay, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't like the message we're getting now, which is that the human species, as we've known it, has failed, that the planet needs to be under some kind of receivership because we have gotten out of control. We're a malignancy on, these, on the earth. We're destroying things. The whole political game is off. I mean, I don't like this message at all. It's a scary like it. message. No, it's a scary message, but it's the oldest message in, in, uh, in Judeo-Christian thinking, which is sort of uh, shape up your God's children and you're, you're blowing it. <laughs> yeah. That's why, I mean, it's the what Tower of Babel all over again and I'm going to flood you out. What do you think? I, I think the message that I got when I was 12 or 13 was I was very nervous, but, but excited too, and I felt absolutely safe. 
They told me that they had gotten in touch with me before. They will get in touch with me again in my lifetime. I felt very connected to them. It, it, I mean, I don't even think of them as uh, outer space beings. It's more like um, a, a wise beings. Um, and the message I got loud and clear is, <laughs> there's a lot more here than meets the eye. <laughs> well, that's good. More. That's good. Okay, great. I'm so glad it called. Feel free to verbalize this. Right on. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Seems to be one item per page. And they translate it in different languages. Today. Aren't we all? Why is it, Jan, that some, I, I, I'm, now I can put our listeners tonight in two categories, like yourself, like Ian, like me. I am fascinated. Mm -hmm. I am curious. I'm champing at the bit. We're going to get right into it. There is another, and I, I would say a very large uh, number of people who... Forward to this. Aren't we all? Why is it, Jan, that some, I, I, I'm, now I can put our listeners tonight in two categories, like yourself, like Ian, like me. I am fascinated. Mm -hmm. I am curious. I'm champing at the bit. Mm -hmm. We're going to get right into it. There is another, and I, I would say a very large uh, number of people nice who right dismiss this as, you know, as ridiculous. In fact, maybe they've already turned off the radio. Oh, I hope not. Well, well, I mean, they're the losers, as far as I'm concerned. Hey, mm -hmm. if this is beyond your comprehension, if you're not in the least bit interested, I, what can I say? That's okay. But gee, aren't you a little curious? I mean, well, when you read a new book called Abduction, published by Scribner's, by Dr. John E. Mack, you are going to want to know more. I will, at the very beginning of tonight's program, I want to... Uh, I want Dr. Mack's credentials on the... Uh, may I do this, John? <laughs> may, but by the way, shall we say John, Dr. Mack, John, professor... Or, please, John, it's fine. Well, John E. Mack, MD, is a professor of psychiatry at the Cambridge Hospital, Harvard Medical School, founding director of the Center for Psychology and Social Change, uh, a, a well-known author, uh, the, 19, the 1977 Pulitzer Prize winning, uh, uh, a prince of our disorder, a wonderful biography of T.E. Lawrence and uh, you know many other books has written a book in which he recounts his experiences over about three and a half years or four, so. four years four years now with patients we're, 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 is it proper to call well, it in, in, that uh, this work has changed the language about so many things because I regard these uh, individuals as my teachers as well as clients or patients uh, they uh, we're learning together about some mysteries that uh, take us into areas that... Uh I'm going to pause this, and I'll come back when I have something. Jerry Barbacudo may be like Whitley Strieber, that she was a gifted therapist, sensitive, pleasant, but she was bait. Whitley Strieber was used as bait because underneath his spiritual um, experiences, he was controlled by Satanists, mind controllers, etc. Jerry Barbacudo may be another one. I had done a page about Ramsey Clark 
having to do with uh, John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King, and Robert F. Kennedy assassinations. Because he had a reputation among progressives as a very fine man and all. Uh, but uh, Harry knew about him. I think Harry didn't expect him to be, what you call it, Holy Spirit outed. He was, uh, he was A.G. under Truman. I had something I hadn't realized. <clears throat> but he just died this year. He died... Uh... Well... He's busted. April 9, 2021. Here he didn't expect Ramsey Clark to be spook up, out spooked. Oh, spooked outed. Give him money, I'll give him money.
I don't have the outing stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Is that how it works, Johnny? How do you this with me? Oh. Facebook it is. Uh -huh. Alright, I'll look at one again. Uh -huh. Sure, sure. Oh, I do have it. It's there. Show me. Uh, okay. Okay, I did good. Good, 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 good. Good.
Fuck shit, fuck shit, fuck shit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we don't do zaps. Uh huh. Okay. I will work it out. Right. Uh, shit. Mm. 